You are watching Southern River Sports here on KQEG. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, an inside look into sports, wellness, and into fitness. Well, this week, a special show, a father-daughter combination. Fresh off a Cooley Conference Championship by virtue of a big win over GET last Friday. Welcome to the show, Matt Quick and Maddie Quick. Awesome. Thank you. Well, start with Maddie. <laughs> Impressive way for you to end the regular season. Looking at the stats, Maddie Quick, 19 points against GET. And then a career high 27 points over, <laughs> by the way, a strong Arcadia team. I saw Arcadia play against, uh, against um, Luther, and I was impressed with them. So, geez, you're peaking at the right time, Maddie Quick. What do you think of that? Thank you. Um, it's really fun, honestly, to see all the hard work that you've put in over the last couple of years, the last lot of years, pay off finally, especially my senior year. We know that it's shortened, so we have to make the most of what we get to play, and we're really lucky that we've got to play. You know, as many as shortened, you're right, yeah. uh, abbreviated season. But, you know, a lot of people, a lot of young people have struggled through this pandemic, isolation, virtual school, hybrid school, game on, game off. A lot of young people have had mental health issues. Uh, a lot of young people are just struggling in a lot of different ways. How has the pandemic affected you, Maddie? Um, well, last year with virtual school, I definitely learned better with in-person school, so I'm glad that we're like back. But with virtual school, it was just kind of hard, like being isolated, like you said, alone at your house, like without being able to see your friends or your teammates. So we what, what about, I mentioned this on one of our uh, games we broadcast a lot of West Salem games right away by the way we enjoy coming to West Salem um, that playing without just a, a limited amount of fans virtually no students no cheerleaders no band everything taken away from you as a senior when you play those games and all that is absent how does that affect you it's definitely gotten some taking used to at first um, we're used to like obviously bigger crowds and student sections and lots of cheering like last year it was also something to get used to like all the big student sections and now just like that not being there it kind of just feels a little bit bare I guess you know I, I've read some articles Matt and of course the head coach at West Salem um, I've read some articles even from NC2A coaches that talk about uh, about how it minimizes the enthusiasm even for them uh, in terms of uh, no fans at games and it just it, it seems like it's kind of an empty feeling how do you feel as a coach uh, we definitely focus on that at the beginning of the year uh, we talked to our team a lot about energy and our our whole bench personnel everybody uh, standing up and cheering for all the positive plays um, and bringing that energy and that made a big difference in several games um, you can really sense that you know when you watch games on TV too, the college teams the teams that have a lot of the energy on the bench, that helps uh, really give those players on the floor a spark, and you can play at a much higher level then. Actually, I noticed that at Viterbo, with both the men and women, the games that I officiate, uh, that the enthusiasm, too, generated from their players, because there's not a lot of fans there, makes a big difference in terms of the excitement and just the support of uh, players that are role players and not in the game. Well, Matt Quick, I, you know, I, you, I remember you from West Grand High School. <laughs> you were quite an athlete there. Of course, it was before the West Grand and Bloomington combined. Now it's River Ridge. Uh, I used to go and work there in the days of, uh, of uh, John Patterson, who passed away a couple years ago. He was a close friend of mine. Uh, uh, Jerome Usgard, yes. some of those people. Yes. but. Your your playing days uh, were pretty special to you. Uh, yeah, they were. Um, I think every every athlete enjoys the their playing days. Um, we had, you know, one thing I remember most is the guys that I played with. You know, some very close friends that I have were my high school teammates. Um, and for a lot of years, we stayed in touch. We'd go to alumni tournaments, get the group of guys together, and and play ball. And that was a lot of fun and uh, not so much anymore we kind of officially retired a, a few years ago from playing now it's just coaching and uh, maybe jumping into a few drills at practice um, but a lot of great memories from high school football basketball and I also ran track so those were my my three sports and from there you went to Platteville yeah I went to Platteville actually to play some football um, and 
and then I ended up playing basketball and that was kind of my basketball was my love um, and still is um, and that was in the Bull Ryan years Platteville was kind of going through their dynasty of uh, when Bull Ryan was there they won a lot of uh, national championships and I was in the program for a year and learned a lot and have a lot of great uh, friendships um, and, and know a lot of those players that, that went through. But um, in that one year, took a lot of things away from, from Bo Ryan and his system and, and kind of how he coached basketball. So that's w one of your mentors, is the, your style of coaching. Of course, maybe even at West Grant, you've, you've, um, those mentors have helped you with your style of coaching. Yeah, and my, I, would, I do want to recognize my high school coach, Tim Scharfenberg. He was a Beaver Dam. Um, alumni and played at Mankato State and shortly after I graduated he went up to Hudson and did some coaching up there and and it's kind of nearing ret retirement but he had a big influence on myself also yeah um, you, you hear stories Maddie that mom I know Carrie pretty well from Potosi and of course your dad you hear stories of the of when they were young and and, and student-athletes yeah every once in a while he'll bring a story out Something reminds him of when he was in high school. He's always sharing. <laughs> well, looking at Maddie Quick's profile, you you, uh, you have done everything: volleyball, <laughs> soccer, tennis, basketball, softball. You've done about everything. <laughs> High honor roll in seven semesters. So, when you think of student athlete, student first, athlete second. That describes you. Yeah, that's definitely always been installed in my head because grades are really important. If you don't have the grades, you can't play the sports. So school always comes first, but with being involved in a lot, it's really like it's really important to balance what you have and make sure that you're like having a planner and keeping everything in track, but we really do stress grades that that's a very high importance. Well, mom and dad both educators, yeah. but uh, is it hard though? Cuz some young people struggle with balance, meaning uh, getting good grades, high expectations. Most athletes at your level are hard on themselves. They want perfection, um, and yet uh, then also wanting to be an athlete. Is it hard to balance that? Because young people uh, often struggle with it. Yeah, I guess it's just priorities and like um, scheduling out your life by certain times and just making sure you have everything in order. Mm -hmm. Well. You're looking at your resume, Matt. I mean, you've you've done about everything. You, not only playing, but your first job in Highland. By the way, I don't know how many people know where that is, but I happen to know <laughs> because early in my officiating career, I was sent to Bloomington and Highland and all those places down south. That was your first. That was taste yes, of course. Yes, a wonderful <laughs> small community. Um, actually, a college friend, uh, Josh Terrell, is the. Uh, girls coach there and he's the principal um, he's got a pretty good team I think they're a two seed they might run up against Royal who's uh, one seed in their bracket um, but that that's where I started and then you headed north you had to you know, just look at JV boys at Sparta girls head coach at Sparta I remember you uh, at that point too being official uh, West Salem boys as a JV coach and then of course youth coach and in, in four years now at West Salem, and by the way, all the games we've worked, West Salem boys and girls, I've commented numerous times, Steve Kastenschmidt, uh, Matt Quick, uh, the, in terms of you, the dignity, that you, how you treat your players, uh, your style of play, how you treat officials, even when there's some bad calls. Uh, it's just representative of uh, the culture of West Salem High School. Yeah, thank you. I think. Uh, the older I get, and as my, my Maddie and my other kids have gotten older, you just learn to take everything more in perspective. And, uh, you know, I've learned from a lot of other really good coaches. I've, I worked with Greg Dahl for a few years in Sparta and took some really good things away from Greg and just how to manage players and keep the fun in it. And uh, it's about the experiences and, and growing as a person, coaching the whole child, um, and then the, the play and the basketball is kind of a byproduct of all those other things. Greg Dahl did a great job and I, he, I, what I remember most about him is his intensity, his passion, and his style of play which was a transition game. I don't even know if they had a half court offense because it was always, if, if you're an official working a, a Sparta game or Tomo when he was coaching, you better be ready to run. Yeah, that was. Yeah, racehorse up and down as fast as we can go. Racehorse is right. <laughs> now, watching the style of play with uh, West Salem, 
I know you, you uh, I like your style because it's transition, it's secondary breaks, it's, uh, it's uh, finding people in transition, hitting the three-point shot, and so on. And you, I like the fact that you play a lot of people, too. Is that your philosophy? Yeah, I think so. It, it's uh, we're definitely in today's world, especially with the, the pandemic. I mean, if you're dedicated out for the sport of basketball, I hope we you can get on the court, and then we try to do that. We try to get everybody a role on the court, um, and, and the, the faster style of play kind of helps rotate more people through. Um, and playing a fast, open style uh, can you get some easier baskets, so everybody can kind of kind of find their role, whether that's uh, playing defense and getting transition layups or shooting three-pointers, um, and just kind of everybody kind of finds their niche. But one of the things that uh, impresses me, and it's not, uh, it's a little unusual, you, uh, in your transition game, you, the, the expectation of turnovers is, is there, because in transition, you have to accept that somewhat. And you seem to have developed uh, that sort of an attitude where you know some of those are going to occur and you, uh, you, you're patient with that. Yeah, I think that's part of the process, especially early in the year. Um, it starts with the tempo and going fast and there, there will be mistakes. And as we get later in the year here, we fine tune things. And uh, our last game against GET, our five turnovers, that's a season low. And that's playing very fast-paced basketball. Um, so we're five turnovers, scoring 76 <laughs> points. You're a big part of that transition game, Maddie. Quick. Yeah, it's a lot with the. It starts with defense, which we've really focused a lot on this year, getting better at our defense. So we get steals, and we just run ahead, and we throw. It's kind of it's working as a team, I guess. Somebody gets the steal, they pitch it ahead, and it's just really fast pace. Well, I think of two teams in the area that play defense, unlike uh, anyone else. One. Aquinas, that tri triggers their transition game, and two, uh, the West Salem Panthers. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back more here on Seven River Sports. With our busy lives, it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument. Lewiston Monuments in Lewiston, Minnesota, has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations. You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments, all at competitive prices. And they're a full-service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no-obligation consultation, or visit lewistonmonument.com for more information. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Salem High School, Matt Quick, and his daughter Maddie. Well, the challenges of coaching your own child, coach daughter. I remember coaching our youngest daughter, uh, Jordy, when she was in fifth through eighth grade. And there were some challenges, but I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I've talked to Dick Bennett about coaching Tony and other coaches, uh, Coach Kravick and coaching his son Kellen and the, the dynamics of that in terms of treating your, your daughter, treating your son the same as other players. There's a whole group of dynamics. How difficult is that, Matt? Uh, it took some practice. <laughs> Very difficult. Um, I was, I'm always pretty hard on Maddie with the high level of expectation. and. As we've grown in our relationship and gotten older, then balance that out really well. You know, she sets a great example for her teammates, and 
uh, I think works as hard as anyone. And that's, you know, as the coach, if your child can do that, that's amazing. So, Actually, I, I noticed that on the court uh, as a broadcaster, as an official. Um, so you expect no more or no less out of uh, senior Maddie Quick? Well, just maximum effort. I think she, do I know that she does that and uh, always gives it her all. And over the years, it's just, you know, worked super hard to get to where she's at. The three E's, effort, enthusiasm, and, and then efficiency. The things that we talk about and I talked about. Um, and, and one of the guidelines that coaches have told me about when they uh, are coaching their own uh, son or daughter is don't coach at home. You agree with that? I would believe that's good advice. Um, challenging to do. You know, there there were always times where we we talk about it at home. Now, I I think this year we've done really well to not coach at home, um, and that's that really good advice and the more you can follow that I think that the better it kind of helps uh, the, the family life and the home life. Prepare your child if you're coaching your child for peer pressure. <laughs> I'm sure that's part of the family dynamics. Yeah I think that's part of uh, becoming a leader especially as a senior and, and Maddie's a, a captain and a leader this year um, and there's certain things learning how to influence your teammates um, in a positive way and set that example. Uh, not always easy, um, but yeah, setting a great example for your peers and, and sometimes having that peer pressure, which is natural in any, any school setting, any team setting, and just making the most out of it. Speaking of uh, expectations, uh, along with the gift of being uh, an accomplished student athlete is accountability, transparency. It's knowing that uh, people are looking at you uh, when you walk through the community, in the hallway, in the mall, wherever. There's Maddie Quick. Uh, maybe they're elementary school kids from West Salem. Maybe they're peer friends from the high school. And so you're, you're, there's a high level of expectation. What's your thought on that? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, sometimes it's nice to get recognition or you'll get text messages or calls like, oh, I saw your name in the Tribune or you were in the news. And that's always really nice. Your name's definitely out there. People are always watching. So you just have to keep that in mind with the things that you do. And I think that kind of influences sometimes how I act because I'm like, I know that people are watching. So you need to keep it um, professional and at a high level. Have you accomplished everything that you set for yourself uh, as from the time you were in middle school and through high school? I think so. I think that I've worked really hard to get where I am today, and I'm really proud of all the accomplishments that I've had and how far that I've came. Um, you, you, you graduate in May and then on to the next chapter of your life. Share that with us. Yeah, so next year I'm going to be attending Concordia University, Wisconsin in Mequon, Wisconsin to play basketball, and I'm thinking of majoring in exercise physiology and then going on to physician assistant school after. I'm glad you said uh, Concordia in Wisconsin because yes, I don't a know couple. if you know that there's about eight of them in, yes. the, in the United States, and so <laughs> one of them I officiate is, is in uh, the Minneapolis area. So, uh, But you have the skills to play at the next level. You thought of that? Thank you. Yeah, um, their coaches reached out to me over the summer and I made a really strong connection with them and that's one of the reasons that I chose to go there. You know, there's a there, there's difference of opinion, uh, Coach, about um, the, uh, uh, the high level of expectations for athletes now. Uh, summer volleyball and, uh, and whatever sport it is and then AAU basketball and, and then high school basketball leagues and and fitness and I mean, all the things that take away from perhaps a job or family time. Is there too much pressure on kids? I think every, every individual, um, they have to help work with their family to do what's best for them. I think finding a, a good balance is important. I'm trying to always promote being a, a two or three sport athlete, especially in a small school like West Salem. Because um, I think you can get burnt out if you just try to focus on one sport, it can really uh, stress a person out, uh, put too much pressure on them. Um, but keeping a balance of playing multiple sports and the, the cross training um, and keeping a balance with their family just kind of helps keep everything in perspective and, and the, naturally they'll still have their favorite sport. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed in your profile, Maddie, uh, one of your role models is Steph Curry. Now we know Steph Curry with the Golden State Warriors and 
probably the best three-point shooter in the history of basketball. Uh, and Maddie Quick, probably, uh, I don't know if our viewers know this, one of the better three-point shooters in West Salem, Panther girls basketball history, and in the Cooley region. But what a lot of people don't know about Steph Curry is that he's a devout Christian, deep spiritual faith. And, and on his shoe uh, are three numbers, four, one, three. Now, a lot of people have numbers and things on their jerseys or on their shoes. His is, is from the Bible verse in Philippians 4.13. And it's, I do all, all things because of the uh, gift that is given to me by uh, my Lord and Savior. I mean, he is a deep person, uh, gives a lot to charity. And so when you said that, I was like, wow. That's pretty significant. Yeah, we there's a lot of videos out there on him, and he's just like a really good teammate. He's a really good person, and on top of that, he's a really good basketball player. I think him and I not play similarly, but like he's a really good shooter, and I've always looked up to him and like his shooting abilities and the basics that he takes, um, just to like keep myself at a higher level. I think that he is a really good like um, influence. Yes, he he's yeah. a good influence on yeah. a lot of people. And uh, he's one of my role models because I look at uh, what he's done uh, outside the court. Um, toughest opponent, I think one of the better players ever played in the Cooley was a, a girl from GET. Lexi Wagner. That's right. Yeah, my, I only played her for one year, my sophomore year, but I was, she was a senior when I was a sophomore and it was a little bit intimidating for me. She's a very, very good player. Kudos to her. And she's at Youngstown State, but I think she's had some injuries. Uh, her freshman year, she tore ACL. I thought she was back this year. I haven't kept up with them because uh, Chelsea Olson from Westby, I think, is a senior at Youngstown also this year. She is. But what a family, the uh, Wagner family. <laughs> Some uh, pretty outstanding athletes. What does uh, Maddie like to do when she's not studying or home with mom and dad or uh, practicing her three-point shot? <laughs> Um, I like to stay active. I like to spend a lot of time outdoors. Um, recently, I've gotten really into hiking, especially with like over quarantine. That's one of the things that's really easy to do. Um, I like to hang out with my friends and family. And recently, I just got a job at um, a nursing home in Alaska, Eagle Crest North. So I'm a dietary aide, and then I'm working towards getting my CNA, which I hope to work as a CNA over the summer. And, and that's part of maybe preparing you for college and, and after. Yes, and then going into the healthcare field. So I think that'd be a really good step in the right direction. Great. We talked a little bit about your uh, your roster earlier on, but I, I'm just impressed with the way your team plays together, uh, Coach. And uh, you, you have some talent there, but they also know their roles. Yeah, it's a wonderful group. I think um, very special group this year with the circumstances. We spent a lot of time virtually on Zoom together. And then right before Christmas, about a week before, we got into the gym. And because we have a lot of returning players, we were able to gel very quickly. Um, and there is a lot of talent there. And everybody um, having those returning players kind of knows their role. And um, we we're just really proud of how they've come together this year and uh, looking forward to seeing what we can do in the tournament play. Well, since you took over, you, the, you've done wonders with that program. And as I look at the postseason, we talked a little bit about this before we went on the air, um, you uh, play on Friday against Sparta. And then if, if you win that game, on to perhaps on Alaska. Give us an indication of what your thoughts are on the postseason. Yeah, um, tough Sparta team. They're, uh, they have some very good talent. Uh, uh, Zabel is a D Division One player and some other talented kids. We played them earlier this year and won by 15, so we're happy to have them at home. Um, so it'll be a tough game, and then we can get through that. We're looking forward to a matchup at on Alaska on Saturday, and they're, you know, they're they're playing really well right now. They beat Prairie to Sheen last week, um, and uh, Shane Schmeling's done a, a great job with that well, team. We have some quality coaches in the area. You mentioned mentioned Shane Schmeling, who's a friend of mine. And I've talked to him quite a bit, and he's been on the show about uh, his devotion and passion to the program. Uh, of course, Dave Donarski, but there's a lot of them in the area that uh, uh, we're blessed with some quality athletes and, and quality coaches. How many more years uh, for <laughs> Matt Quick as head coach? I don't know. That's hard telling. We're, uh, my daughter number two is in eighth grade, so I'm looking forward to... Um, 
continuing to work with the girls program. Um, well, there's there's she, four she more years through. there. <laughs> yeah. And then your son. And then we, have, we have a son, so I'm sure I'll be involved uh, somehow as he, he's playing and coming through school. So you're going to leave the girls program in oh, a little while and I, take over? I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. But we'll be in the gym a lot. I know that. Well, I, I, I'll say this in closing that um, when, the, when, when there are quality coaches uh, in the area like uh, Matt Quick, uh, don't leave the program because it would be uh, disappointing for the kids uh, not having somebody like you uh, coaching. So that's my thought on that. And I think, Thank you. I think Maddie would probably agree. Yeah, I'm very fortunate to have him as a coach. He's taught me everything that I know right now. Good. Well, that's, that is a great way to close the show. <laughs> well, thank you, Terry. Guests this week, uh, head coach of the West Salem Panthers, Matt Quick, and senior Maddie Quick. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. We want to wish you the best in the postseason. We just might be covering West <laughs> Salem, too, uh, yet in the month of February. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials, all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. Back to Seven River Sports. Well, Rick and I were courtside on Saturday night for a much anticipated matchup. The Cooley Conference champs, the West Salem Panthers, versus the MVC champs, the Onalaska Hilltoppers, in the regional championship game. Well, defense seemed to be on display much of the first half with Onalaska taking a 32 23 lead into the break. Onalaska's offense took center stage in the second half as they pulled ahead. All-conference performer and four-year starter Olivia Gamoki led the way with 25 points, followed by Molly Garrity with 13 and Ava Smith with 10. The Panthers' two leading scorers, the dynamic duel of Maddie Quick and Ella Jordan, were kept under wraps, both scoring only six points. Matt Quick's West Salem Panthers closed the regular season with an impressive 11-2 record, while Onalaska moves to the sectionals with a 15-3 record, hosting Medford on Thursday evening. Next week, my guests, two Logan High School senior student athletes, Allie Gesvain and Marcy Safran. Until next week, I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping that you will have an active and a healthy week ahead.